Hello, I'm Jeff Moody. And I'm Katira King. You're watching Arise. Live from London's West End. And this is Showbiz Weekly. On today's show, we take you through the main contenders for this year's coveted Grammy Awards. A favourite date on the fashion calendar, celebrities put their best foot forward for the British Fashion Awards. We take a look at the highlights. And he's performed to thousands as part of Russell Brand's stand-up tours. Now Mr G joins us to tell us how poetry is now influencing musicians. Celebrities, fashionistas and paparazzi were out in force here in London this week for the British Fashion Awards. And it was just as you'd hope, a shimmering, glamorous night with some major awards for some big British names. From best friends Naomi Campbell and Kate Moss to new kids on the block Poppy Delevingne and Kendall Jenner, the beautiful people were out in force to celebrate the best of British fashion. The who's who of the fashion industry were all on hand at the prestigious event which saw Cara Delevingne, Emma Watson and Victoria Beckham walk away with gongs in hand. For Victoria, it was an emotional win for Brand of the Year. I am so, so proud to be British and I am incredibly proud that I have, I have built my brand here in the UK. I'd love to thank the BFC and the British fashion industry for supporting me. A big night for Emma Watson too. The 24-year-old actress picked up the prestigious British Style Award and One Direction's Harry Styles made the presentation. Fans went crazy after the heartthrob who won the prize last year. He congratulated Emma on stage. Thank you so much to the British fashion industry. You have been immensely supportive of me and of my career and you've given me some really amazing chances and the ability to reinvent myself um, in a way that I'm, I'm very grateful for. Rihanna opted for a Stella McCartney tuxedo style jacket on the red carpet, but did the hit maker break the fundamental rules of fashion, legs or chest? There was plenty of both on offer in her red carpet outfit. But when all was said and done, it was Victoria's night. Her husband David was clearly a very proud man. Well, it wasn't the only event to attract the celebs to London this week. The first Victoria's Secret fashion show to be held outside the US came into town. Taylor Swift took to the stage for the second year in a row to perform Style, a song said to be written about her failed romance with Harry Styles. He was there, along with bandmate Liam Payne, who made an appearance on the pink carpet. This is what he had to say when asked why he brought his girlfriend to watch the angels strut their stuff in the famous lingerie. Well, we did. We had a little, a little, a little argument about it. But I thought, I think it, I will enjoy it. We'll have a good time. I'm just going to have to sit like this the whole time. What a gentleman. Well, it wasn't all singing and dancing for Ariana Grande. She nearly got taken out by Elsa Hosk's wing as she performed on stage. And Ed Sheeran was distracted by Adriana Lima and Alessandra Ambrosio, who walked the runway in bras worth two million dollars. Well, nominations for the 57th annual Grammy Awards have been announced, with Sam Smith, Beyonce and Pharrell Williams leading the pack. The trio have six nominations each. 22-year-old Sam Smith picked up nods in the three top Grammy categories, including Record of the Year and Song of the Year for his song, Stay With Me. He's also a contender for the coveted Best New Artist, while Pharrell earned nominations for his own album, Girl, and his work on Sheeran's X, 
and Beyonce's self-titled record. Meanwhile, B has become the most nominated artist in Grammy history with 52 nominations. Her album, released without fanfare last December, is one of this year's biggest selling records with two million copies sold just in the US. Ed Sheeran has plenty to smile about too. The British singer-songwriter has been named the most streamed artist in the world by Spotify. The 23-year-old has racked up more than 860 million streams. That means he's beaten Eminem and Coldplay. His latest album, X, hit the, hit the million sales market in the UK this week, and it was played 430 million times. I think being the most streamed artist on Spotify this year is, I mean, obviously it's a, it's a great thing to be above so many amazing artists that I just assumed would get streamed more. It's saying that I'm playing three Wembley stadiums next year that are pretty much all sold out and I know that that is pretty much down to people streaming and Spotify so it definitely adds to it. He's still a ginger though. Anyway on top of his seven <laughs> Grammy Awards and more recent nominations Pharrell's success is now cemented in the streets of LA. The singer-songwriter, rapper, producer and fashion designer was honoured with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. His song, Happy, catapulted him to stoop superstardom after topping the Billboard Hot 100 chart for 10 consecutive weeks. The 41-year-old says he's still very grounded despite his success. I was once encouraged by, they call them teachers, but I call them the folks that conspired to get me here. My music teachers and my grandmother who figured that while I was using her soup spoons and her whisk and her pillows as a drum set, that maybe there might be something there. I've got happy as my ringtone, you know. <laughs> um, he was cheered on by his wife, Helen, and son, Rocket, as well as his friend and chat show host, Ellen DeGeneres. Well, I'm here because I, uh, like all of you, love Pharrell. I think Pharrell is uh, a genius, and I have been lucky enough to know Pharrell since he was a nerd, and he is grown into an international superstar. His, his lyrics have inspired me and have gotten me through some tough times. When the cops try to get at me, I do drop it like it's hot. <laughs> now, apart from his appearance on Beyonce's Superpower last year, it's been two years since we've heard from Frank Ocean, until now. This week, the Grammy Award-winning artist posted a new track onto his Tumblr. It's called Memorize, and it's more the sketches of a song rather than his official triumphant return. The follow-up to Channel Orange was expected to arrive last year, but apart from the odd rumor, his second full-length studio album is yet to appear. Let's take a listen. Isn't that nice? Now, it's one of the world's biggest festivals, and the first artist has now been confirmed for Glastonbury 2015. Lionel Richie will be headlining the show. Now, for those of you like Chura, not old enough to Excuse remember. Excuse me. You don't have, you have a I clue know exactly who, we're who Lionel Richie is. Isn't he that man that sang that song? Yeah, he's that man, <laughs> exactly. Let's see what you're missing. <laughs> Well, the 65-year-old has sold more than 100 million records worldwide and won four Grammy Awards, including Song of the Year in 1985 for We Are The World, which he co-wrote co with Michael Jackson. Taylor Swift's also been linked with an appearance, but Richie is the first big-name artist to be announced for next June. Now, there aren't really that many things worth flocking to Times Square in the rain for, but a free concert headlined by some of the biggest names in music is certainly one of them. Bruce Springsteen and Coldplay's Chris Martin filled in for Bono at the concert in New York. U2's lead singer could not make the performance as he's still recovering from a recent cycling accident in Central Park. Kanye West and Carrie Underwood also performed at the event on World AIDS Day. Well, now it's time to look at this week's hot new releases in the world of music. And here is our hot new music critic, Afira Dom. 
Thank you. Welcome back. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. You get a round of applause. We didn't. She's only in for five minutes. <laughs> what have you got for us? What have you been listening to this week? Okay, so first of all, this is a long awaited single by Labyrinth. This is Jealous. So let's take a look at this. Jealous of the rain that falls upon your skin. It's closer than my hands have been. I'm jealous of the rain. Well, I'm certainly jealous of his talent. I don't know about you guys. I'm jealous yeah. of his jumper. Well, <laughs> sort of mustard yellow look. I love it, but talk to me about yeah. the song. Yeah, so this is Jealous, as we said, and this is the long way to follow up to hits like Pass Out and Let the Sun Shine. It's a very different sound from Labyrinth. I've spent some time with him in the studio. I've talked to him about how he makes his albums, how he brings his music together. And this has been a real labour of love for him. And you can tell, you can hear that from, from the song. Definitely. What's he working on now, though? Well, he's working on his brand new album, his second album just called Take Me to the Truth. He worked with Ed Sheeran on that. Um, and it sounds like it's going to be very different from his previous material. And that's so excellent. So what do you think of this new material then? I love it. Like we said, it's a different sound. It's more mature. It's grown up lyrics, grown up sound. I think it's great. And it's a real testament to his hard work. So this is a good one. I hope this does well this weekend. Absolutely. OK. Well, now you've got something a little bit more hard-hitting. What's that? Yeah, complete opposite of Labyrinth. Now, this is a new album from seminal hip-hop outfit, the Wu-Tang Clan. This is A Better Tomorrow. So let's have a look at the, the band talking about what brought them back together in the studio. The old pieces on the board. That's just the king right there from the shots. He may be a pawn in this game, because they move. Oh. My buddy diagram was hard. Oh, this has been the hardest. For the longest. Shadow in shadow box. Somebody may forget that this man is a dope lyricist. You know what I mean? I'm on a mission. We've not heard from them for some time. No, what, we haven't. Seven no. years? Yeah. Or yeah. And they've reunited for the first studio production in seven years. Now, this has been a long time coming for the Wu-Tang Clan. And it drops at a time in America that really is quite... Quite, it's it's a very timely album, let me just say it's that. It's a very poignant time in America at the moment, isn't absolutely, it? Absolutely, absolutely. And this album really seems to deal with those issues. I mean, it was, it's was it been written over the past two years. Obviously, this is things that have been bubbling, what we've seen in Ferguson and New York lately. I mean, this is an album which literally, in its lyrics, tells African-American mm. people to stand up and stand strong. So very timely indeed, very poignant. Absolutely. OK, um, we've just got time for something completely different. Completely Bit different. Bit of UK hip-hop. If for you us. can call it that, you can, can you decide for yourself. <laughs> decide okay. for yourself. Now, this is 1212 by George the Poet yeah. from his album The Chicken and the Egg. Let's have a look. Seven billion people in the world. Whoa, whoa. And there's only one This goes out to you, to you, to you and you. If I can do it, you can too. If I can do it, you can too. You, I, you, yeah, you and you. If I can do it, you can too. If I can do it, you can too. Spoken word doesn't seem like a very obvious choice. Why not rapping? Well, I actually did ask Doris to put this when I interviewed him about this album, and he just said it was a more logical avenue for him. It was what made sense. He's not much of a showman, so he says, so this is just what felt comfortable with him, is doing spoken word. Worked very well for me. And he's got great management, doesn't he? He does. He's managed by Rich Lee, too, who we talked about a couple of weeks yes. ago. He's doing well with his singles. So, yeah, he's been brilliant at guiding him through the world of music. Look at you dropping that name. You oh, know? Wow, I was to <laughs> another week. Name I dropping left, right, and centre. Uh, <laughs> the only famous person I know is Kachura. Oh, darling. <laughs> <laughs> Afia Adam, thank you very thank much for you. joining us. Thank you. <laughs> Don't milk it. <laughs>well artists and art lovers from around the world descended on miami this week as the city played host to art basel miami beach 2014. miley cyrus and russell simmons were just two of the celebrities arise spotted at the star-studded event arise entertainment 360 presenter shannon lanier was there and he caught up with portrait artist kayende wiley into creating something because they want an audience. All artists and writers love to have their books read, their paintings looked at, and it's the act of having a public that Art Basel uh, features. Mm -hmm. And what about the representation of African-American artists here? Is there enough, not enough? 
Well, African Americans, uh, African Americans are only a small percentage of the art industrial complex. Mm. Right now, what you're seeing is less than 10% of all of the artists' work that you'll see here is African American. By and large, if you look, if, if you look at the art education system none of us are coming through and I think it's a huge problem because we have so much to say and add such a great voice to the art community. Mm. Easily some of the most successful artists in the art world are African American or uh, artists of color because their points of view are embraced and people are hungry for that content. Right. I think it's only a matter of time until the broader community starts to recognize the truth of that. Well, that was Arise's Shannon Lanier reporting. Well, the art festival finishes tomorrow, but if you're not lucky enough to be in Miami Beach, Kane Day's work will also be seen at London's National Portrait Gallery. A video appearing to be the isolated vocals from Mariah Carey's performance this week at the tree lighting ceremony in New York's Rockefeller Center has found its way online. The Grammy winner struggled to hit the high notes as she belted out her Christmas hit, which, to be fair, is pretty high. Prepare to cringe. <laughs> well, now it's time for a video that's clacking its way to the top after becoming a viral hit on the internet. Rolling Wang's song is relatively unknown in her home country of China, but her song Chick Chick has managed to rack up more than 10 million views on YouTube in one month. Wang said the inspiration came to her in a dream. Looks like dreams really do come true. And now, it's my favorite part of the show. It's time to take a look at the week in Celebrity Tweets. Now, if you think classrooms and dusty books are as exciting as poetry gets, you're very wrong. The spoken word is influencing some of the world's most successful rock and pop musicians. Mr G has been instrumental in that rise, and he joins me right now. Hello. How are you doing? I'm a poet and I don't even know it. Do you? That's good. <laughs> First time I've ever heard that Is in my it? life. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if I'd have had more time, I'd have thought I'm going to steal that, definitely. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, right, uh, so you've been supporting Russell Brand. Yep. You're out there on the O2, yep. thousands of people watching, yep. and you're performing poetry. Poetry, yes. Yeah. How does that go down? Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's difficult when I say I'm about to do a poem, then there's this weird, hmm? Huh? And then, uh, luckily, you know, the, the, the words just hopefully capture them and then they just, ah, uh, at the end, you know? Because poetry, you know, it, it takes you into a different place. I mean, we, we, we sort of... The, the, the reputation is, you know, poetry is boring, it's what you learned at school, yeah. it's what you didn't particularly like, and yet poems are everywhere, aren't they? They're on sort of birthday cards, they're, they're, on, they're on so many things in life. Poetry is just, it's just the right words for the right time, right? And so whether it's your, you know, Facebook update or, your, you know, on your Twitter feed, you're just, you're just looking for the right words. And so that's all a poet does, just takes the words and just delivers, delivers them to you at the right time. And, and what got you into poetry? 
oh, I had a really boring job. I worked in construction and I absolutely hated it. And I found myself writing all my frustrations, all the stuff I couldn't say to my boss. I wrote in a poem and then I just performed it at night and that's what got me into it. Could you write a poem for my uh, boss, please? Right. I will do. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I mean? All right, I'll write it alongside oh. your P45. Isn't yeah. It? <laughs> He's watching as well. Yeah. I probably said the wrong thing. <laughs> now, um, we have to talk about you, you, you worked for radio on Radio 4 yeah. with um, Russell Brand. That was Radio 2. Radio 2, and yeah. radio two yeah. sorry, Radio 4. Uh, radio 2. Uh, and you were there um, with the whole Andrew Sachs thing, yeah. weren't you? I was right the in Sachs the room. Yeah, thing. it was me, Russell, Jonathan Ross in the same room. When they, they, they phoned him and they were very rude on air about his granddaughter. Yeah. Uh, what, what was it like from your perspective? From my perspective, you're talking to the wrong guy. I thought it was funny, you know, because it's, it's guys joking. It was guy, <laughs> you know, when you take it out into the big wide world, then it's like, oh, it, it takes on a different meaning. But when it's like three guys in a room just joking, you forget that it's being broken. I know it sounds stupid, but it was just guys joking around. But uh, were you surprised by the reaction to it? Um... Yes, I suppose so. The initial reaction, because bear in mind that the next day there was no complaints and it was only after it was run in the papers, left, right and centre, then people decided to be offended. But in terms of our audience, who we were playing towards, right, I don't think they were offended. But obviously, you know, if you take a, a joke from a pub and you broadcast it out, then it takes on a different... it's a, it's a different beast. OK, so tell me about Chill Pill Christmas Special. What is it? Where is it? Chill Pill is um, part of this group that, you know, we promote spoken word poetry events and we're putting on a big Christmas show on December the 18th at the Albany Theatre and there's going to be music from an Afrobeat group called United Vibrations. There's going to be poetry from um, a poet called Luke Wright, Vanessa Kasuli, Iceling Fahey, who's the Young Poet Laureate for London. We're going to have a choir. There's going to be mulled wine. There's going to be mince pies. I'm going to be up there just being my usual idiotic self. It's just going to be a big, huge party, and so we're going to be... All this occurs at the Albany Theatre in Deptford. You have me on mulled wine, to right. be honest. <laughs> I will be there. So you're going to be performing for us right now, yep. in fact. Yep. Um, what are you going to be performing for us? OK, I'm going to be performing a poem that's called To the Birds. And is this something that you wrote yourself? It's something I wrote myself. And, yeah. and where can people hear this performed? Is this going to be at the Chill Pill Christmas Special? Yeah, I'll be performing at the Chill Pill Christmas Special. It's just my little... It's, it's, it's a poem that I do for kids. It's like I do a lot of school workshops, and it's a poem that I do for kids just to get them into the idea of poetry. Fantastic. Yeah. Cherry will appreciate it, then. Oh, yeah, definitely. So. She will. You know. Right, right. <laughs> um, over to you, Mr. G. OK, then. Right. To the birds. Two red robins awoke early one morning, father and son sharing a moment of calling, in the magical hours between dewdrops and dawn when all is calm with the world. Said son to father, Dad, why do we sing and puff up our chest and limber up our wings when it seems to me to be a bird is but a lowly thing when man is in charge of this world? He builds a nest so high that it can make love to the sky. He wears feathers in all shapes and all colours and sizes. His wings are invisible, but yet he can fly so high. So why should we sing in this world? Said father to son, hmm, yes, man indeed is strong. He has the grace of a peacock, the pride of a peacock and the grace of a swan. He even goes a little cuckoo when the weather goes wrong, for he believes that he's in charge of this world. He puts a feather in his cap as he tries to rule the roost. But whenever he gets scared, he feels the bump of a goose because we used to be dinosaurs, and that's the truth. And that's why we'll always sing in this world. Thank you. I love it. I love it. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Mr G, you converted me to poetry. Good stuff indeed. I'll write that for your boss, OK? All right? Please do, exactly. yeah. See you at the welfare office. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed for joining Thanks. us. Thanks. Well, the shroud of secrecy surrounding the 24th instalment in the James Bond franchise has finally been lifted. And the new movie goes by the name of Spectre. Well, the star-studded returning cast includes Rafe Fiennes, Hello, Naomi Harris, Ben Wilshaw, Rory Kinnear and Daniel Craig, of course. Well, the actor will be reprising his role as Super Spy 007 in Spectre for the fourth time. Bigger and better than, uh, than Skyfall, it's as simple as that. Mm. And how are you going to achieve that? How, what's the plan? Well, where do I begin? Um, we've just got the, you know, we've got some of the Sams d directing it again. We've got some of the sa same great cast. Um, I believe we've got a better script than we had last time, so, you know, it's just, 
here we go. He's so modest. Well, the latest film in the saga is scheduled to begin shooting over seven months from Monday and will be directed by Sam Mendes, his second Bond film. We will be shooting uh, in some fantastic places. Uh, here at Pinewood Studios, a magnificent facility, if you've never been here before. Uh, in London, uh, in Rome, in Mexico City, uh, in Tangier and Air Food in Morocco, um, and taking Bond back to the Alps, to the snow again, in Solden in Austria. The stars of the new instalment of Peter Jackson's Hobbit trilogy were out in force this week for the world premiere in London. Orlando Bloom, Evangeline Lilly, Benedict Cumberbatch, Kate Blanchett, and Ian McKellen walked the red carpet meeting and greeting some dedicated fans. The Hobbit, The Battle of the Five Armies, is the last in the series and it brings the story to an epic conclusion with a showdown to end them all. Well, the buzz around the new Star Wars trailer just won't go away. The inclusion of a black stormtrooper in the seventh instalment of the franchise be uh, became uh, causing quite a stir on social media. John Boyager appeared to subtly address the situation with a cryptic Instagram post that read, to whom it may concern, get used to it. He also thanked fans for all the love and support after the teaser was posted online. Well, now it's that time of the show when we take a look at the latest and the greatest film releases with our great film critic Fantastic here, film Donna critic. Mope <laughs> with the cat. Thank you very much. Thank Donna Mope with the cat. How are you, Donna? You're I'm very right. good. We've very missed very you good. in the yeah, last couple of weeks. Too, too. And your plethora of caps. Oh, yes, right. Right, runs in the family. It's just <laughs> another bad hair day for Donna Mope. <laughs> OK, let's start off then. We've got Viv Vivica Fox, Lynn Whitfield, both in a Nollywood film. Yes. What's that all in about? In a Nollywood film. In a Nollywood Tether film. Days in Atlanta, the Nigerian film which takes a local kid, takes him to the United States for 30 days, and it is one of the funniest films I've seen in a very, very long time. Actually, quite very interesting. I spoke to Lynn Whitfield a couple of years ago, and she told me about this film she was doing in Nigeria. I never actually took her serious. This is the film. Let's have a look. Get out, you there! Wait, 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 wait. Get out. Slap you. I'll slap you now. Mm. Oh, 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 no. Are you Richard's mom? Thirty days in Atlanta. You hold it right there. Wow. <laughs> That's fantastic. I can't wait to watch that. <laughs> you should. You should. It's out in cinemas now. Now, the next movie is a Christmas feel-good sort of... What is it? Annie, tell me about it. Now, Annie is this um, epic comedy musical um, featuring um, some of the great musicians in America. The interesting thing about this film is Will Smith and Jay-Z were the producers of these films. And you don't actually know that these guys actually fund a lot of big films in America. Let's have a look. Someone just posted a picture of Annie on Twitter. Whoa, my hair is gigantic. Don't let your food get cold. Mm. Okay. Annie, you got me eating this thing up like a dog. Mmm, this is great. What is it? Mmm, paprika? Mmm, oregano? <laughs> <laughs> so, Don, I'm confused. Is it actually a remake of Annie, as in the sun will come out tomorrow? <laughs> yes, indeed. Bet in your way, bottom dollar. <laughs> look, out, look out for Jamie Foxx and Cameron Diaz in this film. They are amazing. And the lead actress, I can never pronounce her first name, because of Vanale. Uh, she's amazing. She's such a precocious I mean, little 11-year-old. She, she, she is a star for the future. I mean, I have not seen a young actress like her old or old, an hour-long film. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's, it's a feel-good film for Christmas. Amazing. So, out, out of the two, and if you could only go to one of them, if you only had a certain amount of money in your which pocket, you which of the two would you go to? 
Because my mom is watching, it has to be 30 days <laughs> in Atlanta, <laughs> representing Nigeria all the way. Fantastic. Aww. Well, I think we should make it, a, make it a date and we'll go out together. Yes, yes, it's coming to London. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> you should go on a date now, are you? Well, us three. Oh, us three. <laughs> Not into that sort of thing. That's Don Amope, thank you very much. <laughs> That's it's all so for pleasure. today. Thank you for watching. We'll be back at the usual time, the usual place, same time next week with more gossip and another fabulous outfit from Couture. Always. King. Or maybe this one. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>